Hello everyone and welcome to All Things Watched. In this video we are going to talk about episode 3 of the brand new FX original series which is also released and available for streaming on Hulu which is of course Shogun and episode 3 was titled Tomorrow is Tomorrow and this episode does not waste any time it picks up literally the very next morning uh, with uh, pretty well, uh, basically, in the aftermaths of the assassin trying to, uh, you know, t trying to take out uh, uh, John, the barbarian. And so this ends up forcing uh, Yoshi to have to sort of come up with a plan and potentially even transport him because, there, you know, there's just so much unrest and unease here in Osaka that he decides he's going to take uh, the barbarian somewhere else where he can be, you know, somewhere else that he trusts and whatnot. And I really like this little bit of a back and forth that Yoshi Taranga has here with Kashigi, uh, uh, Kashigi, I believe is how you pronounce his name, uh, uh, Kashigi or something like that, <laughs> I'm probably butchering the name, but either way, I really like this back and forth, it was really cool uh, how they planned it, and then in the meantime, here back with the people that were on the docks, I believe his, his name is Ferrari, uh, you know, he's getting very frustrated now, uh, because of the fact that the boat was not authorized to leave the previous night, because Yoshi never gave uh, the go-ahead, he never gave the uh, the permission for the boat to leave. He didn't, uh, you know, he did he didn't uh, he he didn't release the boat. Uh, so this person is very angry and very upset, and he's basically like, you know what, we're going to declare tonight that uh, that we're going to leave whatsoever. And along the way, he ends up running into Vasco, and Vasco actually ends up learning here that John is still very much alive. Now, I actually really like Vasco. Uh, I find uh, I really love his dynamic, even with John when they're both uh, on screen together. And I was, I'm, a, I kind of hope that he sort of has a little bit of a bigger role because I feel like he's sort of uh, becoming more of like a secondary or even like a tertiary character. I feel like he's going to be a character that pops up every now and again, but he's really going away from that sort of main character role which is kind of sad because I really like uh, the actor uh, you know who's who's playing uh, who's playing Vasco I really love the actor Nestor uh, Carbonella I believe is how you pronounce his name you know I know him from Lost he played Richard in Lost and he did a great job playing Richard as well and I find he do he's I'm fine he's doing a great job here as well and um, and you know he 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 really doesn't even look like him. I find that the makeup and design for his character really doesn't even uh, look like him. But I love his portrayal as Vasco, and I really like Vasco as a character. So he does joke around, and he even sort of says to himself out loud, he's like, wow, you know, John actually survived. And he's he's a little bit surprised that John was able to survive this line without being killed. Now, in the meantime, going back to John, John has a cut on his arm now from the assassin. And, you know, the so-called doctor here is trying to fix him up, so to speak, even though I don't think it's actually a doctor. And he actually looks at uh, Mariko, the doctor does, uh, and actually tells uh, Mariko that all John needs is a woman. And I think that this sort of uh, s maybe potentially sparks something in her because I do feel like this is something that could end up happening in the future. Uh, you know, I'm not really 100% sure, you know, if it will or whatnot, but I do, I could foresee this as becoming a thing just for one because of the culture and then also two because, like, they do seem to be giving John, you know, gifts and he is sort of making his way up through the ranks here in this culture so i would not be surprised if he ends up you know having to have a spouse or something like that but i don't really know who it will be because mariko is married so I, I highly highly doubt that it would be with her even though i do suspect there will be some form of interest uh, between them eventually and so after we get that scene, then we end up coming to this woman. And at first, I didn't even really recognize who it was. I didn't realize that this is the same lady from the very first episode who ended up losing her husband and her child. If you go back, if you can remember, in the first episode when Yoshi was being uh, basically accused in front of the other four uh, council members. Uh, you know, it was her husband that, you know, stood up and tacked up for Yoshi and said that it's not right for him to be insulted and so because of this he he agreed to take his own life and also his child's life and so here you, uh, this is his wife now uh, or what you know you know she used to be married to him and she used to have the child 
but she now gets to live because a part of the agreement was Yoshi agreed that she would not be hurt uh, because I think that she's actually like the niece or the granddaughter or something like that of one of Yoshi's messengers, like really close uh, lead second messenger, so to speak. So Yoshi did agree to protect her, even though her husband and child died. And it appeared that there was like two things in front of her here. She's looking at these two things, and I don't know if it was like if they're kind of like urns or something, because I'm not sure if that means her husband and her baby was like cremated or something. But either way, it seems like she's looking at uh, some form of I don't even know what you'd call it something that resembles her family, some form of like shrine or something like that. And so, uh, I'm I don't really know what's going to happen with that storyline, but the fact that they brought it up again and they introduced her again makes me think that she will have a role eventually, maybe whether or not that's in this episode or a future episode, the fact that they focused on this uh, makes me think that there's, because they, you know, it happened in the first episode and now she's back again here in the third episode, so it does make me think that there's going to be something going on here. Uh, in terms of I think she'll have a role in some way maybe she might even end up flipping maybe she'll end up working with Ishido uh, but I don't know it's hard to know it's hard to tell uh, I don't know because the Japanese culture are very you know they're very profound to their laws and their their honor and their code and whatnot so she probably won't hurt y uh, Yoshi but it's hard to know I'm, I just feel like there is significance to this character because of the fact that she was brought up again and they showed her again uh, and sort of showing the aftermath of her having to lose her husband and her child and so in the meantime uh, now a lot of the members and a lot of Yoshi's clan and a lot of his nation are now being transported and they're now moving like I already said he plans on bringing these people to a more safe secure location because he no longer trusts being here in Osaka and so uh, they all get ready to go and as you can see uh, Mariko is sticking close to John sort of uh, you know helping John understand what's going on uh, while also sort of you know getting information from John and I really like how we're seeing all this sort of from John's perspective because you know John is new to this you know custom and so are we because we're being introduced to these characters in this culture as well sort of like John you know he was thrown into here out of nowhere just like we're sort of thrown into this show probably not understanding all the rules and the laws and everything so we're sort of going through all this like he is except he's an actual prisoner and so she explains to him because Ishido ends up you know arriving and he ends up inspecting all the guard and he forces everybody to sort of stop and you know have everything inspected and whatnot and so Mariko is actually explaining all this to John while Ishido is here doing it in the meantime Yoshi ends up you know planning this sort of like this little undercover operation where they end up having a distraction which appeared to be like a pregnant woman almost like she was uh you know having uh you know sort of uh it's like sort of like she was having contractions and whatnot and so that is used as a as a, a distraction and so they end up taking out uh, the guest who was actually in this little thing and then Yoshi himself ends up uh c jumping into the carriage uh, because he's going to go with the transport because I think that he knows this transport once again will be attacked and once again there will be another move against John and his life so now uh, Tarango wants to actually be there as well and so a uh, really cool sequence here is that once again Ishido being as clever as he is he orders once again another inspection right before they leave the walls and I think that Ishido probably figured that Yoshi would do something like that and he's doing everything in his power to sort of stand in Taranga's way and so he ends up ordering another inspection and of course uh, so John knows that this is you know he's gonna get caught and so John ends up you know causing a scene and you know it ends up casting him you know causing him to end up being punched in the face and whatnot so he does take a little bit of a beating here uh, but it's really cool how him and Mariko work together uh, and and to basically you know sort of distract the guards to the point where one of the higher authorities comes over and then eventually just is like you know hey Ishido I already give to go ahead let us go and so they end up getting through no problem but of course just like we figured while they're on the road they end up getting attacked and I uh, I'm not really 100% sure who it was that attacked them but I'm assuming it's the same group that uh, brought the assassin in in the previous episode but either way they get attacked here on the road and once again absolutely phenomenal 
phenomenal uh, cinemography, really cool choreography. You see Mariko now. You can tell now that she's trained. She knows how to use a weapon. She knows how to use a sword. And she's really doing a great job with her defense and, and defending, uh, you know, uh, defending her clan and, and fighting against these people. And, and of course, um, and of course, Taranga is here and John is here. So everybody really is fighting and picking up in arms and fighting. Uh, so they manage to escape anyways. And they get down to the docks. And of course, John has a relationship with some of the people working down on the docks. So he's sort of able to get, uh, he's basically able to get everybody safe passage. Uh, or at least gets them access to boats so that they can then ride out to another boat. And I believe there's actually like a couple of boats out there that are really big, and I think one of those uh, uh, ships are is actually the uh, the I believe they call it the black ship, which is the ship that John himself was captured on, I think. And then there's another smaller ship, which I believe Osaka or not Osaka, uh, um, Taranga owns, I believe. So Taranga owns one, and then the Portuguese owns one. The Portuguese owns the black ship, and then Taranga has his own ship. And so I think the idea here is that uh, John is going to work with these people to try to get uh, Yoshi out to his own ship and hopefully, uh, you know, try to find a way, you know, basically look for safe passage safe passage because they're all being hunted and of course uh john is able to get them through and we get this really uh, just awesome cinemography really cool scene as you can see uh yoshi taranga and mariko and john and whatnot they're all out in these little rowboats now and they're going out to one of the bigger boats uh and then we end up getting like an overhead view and we see just how many people are coming they're all uh, all the fighters and all the samurais are holding torches and whatnot here uh, and this is when we get an absolutely devastating scene which is of course we end up seeing Mariko's husband he ends up getting left behind on the dock but he ends up absolutely fighting very valiantly and he really does a phenomenal job at holding off everybody uh, but of course he's not able to completely hold them off uh, and it seems like he gets overcome now the only thing that makes me a little curious about this sequence is the fact that he we don't actually see him die. He ends up going inside of this like little room or whatnot. But I still just don't think that he would have survived. Just given the fact that there are so many of them. Um, the only way that I think that he would survive is if Ishido ends up keeping him alive. Just so that he can question him. Maybe find out some information about Taranga or about Jan. Uh, but beyond that, like I really don't see him surviving. So he either died in combat or he's alive but they're going to end up torturing him or you know combating him or, or, or doing something to him for information but I just don't see how he would walk away with that uh, from that with with absolutely no scars or anything like that and so in the meantime uh, all the robots ends up getting out to uh, the ship and whatnot and so Yoshi ends up going in and sitting in with uh, with uh, with the Portuguese and with the Catholic and with the priests and he ends up making an arrangement and a part of that arrangement is that uh, they will use the black ship to help T Taranga escape and get through the docks and whatnot but in the meantime a part of the agreement is that John himself has to stay behind and I'm guessing that it's because he is a Protestant and so not only does Ishido and then want to sort of get rid of John but so do the Catholics and so I feel like this is probably why they made the agreement you know to leave him behind and so they obviously end up going out and they tell John the agreement Mariko ends up telling him, saying, hey, you know, we got the agreement. They're going to help uh, Yoshi Taranga escape. They're going to help him get out through the harbor and whatnot and escort him uh, to uh, the place. They do say the name of the place, I think, but I can't quite remember what it was called. It was like Ajiro or something like that or something weird. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was what they called it or some, some kind of place. Anyway, they're trying to take him and... Um, or they're trying to escape to sorry and so of course like i said the agreement is that john has to stay behind but john is like nope screw that and he ends up <laughs> commandeering another ship so i'm not, I'm not really 100 percent sure like how they got separated under these two ships or even why there was two ships i'm not really 100 percent sure if like the portuguese owns one of these ships or if like if uh if uh yoshi owns this ship but they wanted to use the black ship to sort of 
you know, be powerful enough and big enough to get through the defense. I'm not really 100% sure why there's two ships here, but either way, there's two ships here, and John commandeers one, and he's like, nope, we're not going, you know, I'm not going to die here today, basically, and he takes over the ship, and he ends up sailing out against the black ship. And, of course, this is also a great way for him to sort of show off his skills to Taranga, because, like we said, John is a sailor. He is familiar with the boat. He knows his way around. He knows how to navigate. He knows all these things. Uh, so I think this is a great, um, you know, I think this is a great way for him to demonstrate his worth to Taranga and show that he has a lot of skill too. Just maybe not, you know, not the same way as the samurai. He probably don't know how to wield a sword, but he does know how to, you know, be the captain of a ship. And so I thought it was really cool. Also, the visuals was really nice. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of this was probably CGI, but it, they did a really great job at rendering the CGI and making it look uh, very uh, transparent you know in the sense that you can't really see the CGI it looks really smooth very clean very crisp it also helps that this scene takes place at night you know oftentimes whenever you have CGI heavy stuff you oftentimes want to do the scenes uh, during the night time so that you don't see you know it just helps the lighting helps uh, cover the CGI a little bit better so really cool scene really liked it and they're going head to head and as you can see when we get the overview shot you see that um, you know you see that uh, Taranga and then of course John's ship are like neck and neck they're both trying to get through the portal and whatnot and actually the Portuguese uh, Vasco is actually ordered to not let him pass but he does you can tell that he does sort of uh, you know you can tell that he sort of uh, slows down a little bit and gives John the edge and when you know and then when uh, I believe it's Ferrari or whatever his name is when he sort of says something to him he's like hey you're giving him the edge uh, Vasco just says to him no he already has the edge so it's almost like Vasco has this sort of mutual respect he sees how good John is sailing the fact that John was able to stay alive for this long the fact that he you know is I, I think he's just very surprised I think Vasco now has that sort of respect for John he doesn't, you know, John doesn't back down to anybody. He stands up to Yoshi. He stands up to the Portuguese. He literally, like, curses at them and calls them, you know, everything to their face. So he's not a cowardice person. And I think after seeing that and after seeing his skill with being able to maneuver here with the boat and with this ship, I think that Vasco has enough respect uh, for him to give him a chance to save his own life and to get out and escape. And that's exactly uh, what happens. He ends up getting out. And he ends up uh, escaping and barely, he barely gets through the narrows, but he does uh, and he ends up, uh, which I thought was really cool. And it was just a whole s cool sequence and really good CGI and it was really fun to see that. And so the next day then we end up coming to this scene, which I just, yeah, I thought this scene was absolutely hilarious because it's kind of like Taranga's like, Taranga is just like rubbing it in their face uh, because he ends up uh, sending... Uh, a letter here to Ishido, which is of course a letter of his resignation, which basically is trying to saying that he, he's resigning from the council and he no longer has a seat at the table, uh, which is kind of funny because he does this during a time when they're trying to hunt him and impeach him and even kill him uh, in execution. But it's really funny because, uh, once again, this shows how clever Taranga really is. And he's actually using the politics against him. Because he then, because as soon as Ishido, Ishido gets this piece of paper, he says, this changes nothing. We're still going to vote to have, uh, you know, Taranga executed and, and expelled and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then uh, Taranga's messenger, the one who actually delivered the piece of paper, he's like, well, in order for any vote to take place according to the rules and according to the law, there has to be five people set at the table. And so now that Taranga has resigned, now there's only four, which means they cannot vote until they seat, put somebody else at the seat of the table, which also, once again, would not only delay them from being able to hunt uh, uh, Yoshi, but it would also... Uh, you know, it might even be a little bit complicated for the, for them to find somebody, given the fact that not all of them are on the same page. So it's just really funny, uh, to me at least, I, I actually almost laughed out loud when I seen this. I was like, this is hilarious. Taranga is just so intelligent. He really knows how to use the rules and bend the laws to himself, uh, to benefit himself. And I just thought it was so funny because every time they think that they're going to get ahead, or, you know, and, and sort of one up Yoshi, they never ever do. And I just, I thought it was so funny to see that. And uh, Ishido, you can tell how frustrating Ishido is uh, and whatnot. And you can tell how much Taranga is really starting to get on under his skin. 
and so in the meantime back at the boats uh, Yoshi ends up leaving the black ship and he ends up going uh, over onto uh, Jan ship and he basically thanks the Portuguese and whatnot for you know for all their help and everything and whatnot and uh, but what I really liked here was this was a really now a really st big step forward for Taranga and John and their relationship because these are the diaries that John had uh, that were basically his personal belongings that he had taken with him which sort of proves that he's a pirate and so here Yoshi is offering these journals back to John so to speak and he tells John hey we found these journals and uh, you know this is evidence and proof that you are a pirate but then he hesitates or sort of stops for a second but he says this would take you uh, but this will take our translators a really long time to be able to translate it. Uh, and plus he tells them, like, the, the crime or the consequences, you know, punishable by death. But I just thought it was really cool that he shows John, hey, we have these, but at the same time, we're going to keep it concealed. We're not going to punish you right now. Uh, you know, it's going to take a long time for us to translate this. Uh, once again, he's sort of bending the rules, but still following them or obeying them. But he's sort of bending the rules to his own advantage. And I just really like that because that was a really big step forward for John and Taranga. Because they very they are very much now allies. And then we get, uh, once again, another really sort of uh, comedic sort of a, a relief type scene where they're all on the ship and now uh, Taranga is asking John to basically teach him and show him how to dive and he also says to him that he would like to uh, sort of uh, I, I, I guess you would say that he sort of wants to like promote him so to speak but he also wants uh, uh, he wants him to train uh, uh, train his army so to speak or a section of his army to learn how to uh, basically to learn foreign tactics uh, so he wants John to teach them how to fight and teach uh, his army his way of fighting and what his techniques are and maybe what they would do over in England and that type of thing uh, so I guess uh, for John I, once again I don't really know what he would be able to do to teach them other than sailing so maybe they'll create like some form of navy or some form of like naval sort of special ops type thing here back in the 1600s which would be really cool I would love to see them do that uh, it'd be really interesting to see that uh, but uh, anyways he sort of promotes him and, or asks him to do this training and whatnot and then uh, this, the, the episode ends with them actually diving together once again very comedic it was, it was great to see uh, sort of a happy ending a little bit fun not so serious not you know somebody trying to be assassinated even though this episode still had a tons of great action tons of great special effects and it looked really uh, looked very real it was very well done and it was a lot of fun uh, but you know it, it was nice to see this episode end on a little bit more of a happy note as opposed to just serious you know tension and all that kind of stuff it's nice to see Taranga have fun it's nice to see John have fun and like I said once again we're only three episodes in and already John has, you know, went from being a prisoner to someone who was about to be executed pretty well from the first episode. If you can remember, they actually boiled one of, uh, they, they, they should, uh, they should have or they actually boiled one of his crew members but then he ends up surviving and so now here he is all this time later and he's literally diving with Taranga he's being promoted he has really good uh, living quarters uh, they sort of uh, teased in this episode that maybe he will end up with a woman definitely not Mariko because she's married but I do suspect that he'll end up with someone or some form of uh, you know I don't know what a companion or whatever uh, and then of course he ends up getting promoted and then also uh, Yoshi sort of uh, lets him know and tells him that hey I know that you're a pirate and I know that we have we have this information from your diaries and whatnot but I'm willing to let it slide I'm willing to keep it concealed uh, for now at least but also I think at the same time it's kind of like a little bit of a threat too because he's like well we do have this and it is punishable by death so it's almost like you know for now we're going to be allies but if you you know if, if you end up breaking the truce so to speak or or if you end up coming against me then maybe we will use this against you and the punishment is death so really curious to see uh, which I don't think is going to happen I do think John will stay loyal to uh, Yoshi just because of the fact that he does hate uh, the other leaders he is about to go to war with the other nations 
And we know that the other nations are very much Catholic and very much uh, a part of the religion and whatnot. And we know John is a Protestant. So I have no doubts in my mind that he will stick with Yoshi. And I have no doubts in my mind that Yoshi will protect him for as long as he can as well. I just hope that in the finale nothing happens to Taranga. I really love his character and I, I, I just can't see anything happening to John. Uh, you know, everything for the most part, the whole story is revolving around John or from his perspective. We're sort of learning everything as he learns, uh, but I really just, uh, I really hope that Taranga survives as well. Uh, but I do think that Taranga is more likely to die than what John is. It, it would be interesting, I guess, to sort of see a season two uh, if, if it ends up being renewed, which I have no doubts that it will because of the amount of ratings that it has, the high ratings. But it would be interesting to see what would happen to John if Taranga did die. But I feel like you, you, they really can't because I think that if Yoshi actually died, then maybe, you know, it is possible that, I mean, where do you really go with the story? I mean, they would almost have no choice but to kill John. Like, I don't see how John could move forward without Yoshi's protection unless it ends in a way where he be set free and he's allowed to go home. And then maybe, uh, you know... Uh, Japan ends up following him to England. That could be a pretty interesting concept to have the samurai follow him home. But then again, you know, he did say that he's English and uh, and whatnot. He's from England, and we do know, uh, you know, it, or you know, it, we do know that he uh, that he has. We do know that John has pills as well, which is something that I uh, actually now that I'm thinking about it, I actually kind of forgot about in. The, I think it was the first episode. Yeah, I believe it was episode one when he actually uh, hauled his pistols out. But it turned out that Vasco ended up having them. Or something like a line that lines. like, Or maybe it's the Portuguese that has the pistols. I can't quite remember. But either way, one of the sides, or maybe both the sides, both the English and the Portuguese, have access to guns and uh, pistols and I, and I guess uh, cannons as well and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, you know it'd be interesting to see maybe that's something that he could sort of train uh for you know maybe that's something one way that he could benefit uh you know in terms of when yoshi wants to sort of learn about foreign tactics and whatnot well maybe that's something he could teach the samurai maybe he could teach them about gun fare uh, gun warfare cannon warfare that type of thing I, d I don't really know uh i'm just i just i'm only now thinking about it. I, I forgot in episode one we've seen that uh you know you know the europeans do you know have access to firearms and stuff like that where the samurai are more so using uh swords which is also something that sort of came into play in a netflix original series blue eye samurai which was actually a, an anime but that was a very big uh, part of that series as well how you had the blue eye samurai who fought with the sword but then you had the uh, you know the the European men, and I think they were English as well, and they used to fight with pistols, so it was a very unfair, uneven battle. But either way, I absolutely loved this episode, and I loved how it ended on much more of a happier note as opposed to the previous episode. And so I'm really curious to see where everything's going to go from here. Now I do think John eventually will end up with a woman. Um, I you know I I I still don't really know you know what would happen. Like I mean. Technically speaking, uh, you know, in this episode, we did get Morocco's or Mariko or Morocco's Morocco's uh, husband die. So, I mean, I guess that does sort of open the door and sort of pave the way for him and Morocco now to sort of have a uh, is that is that her name Morocco or Mariko Mariko. Uh, it does sort of pave the way for them to to have a relationship, but I'm not really sure that they would want to go that way. Not only that, but like Morocco or uh, Morocco's husband literally just died in this episode. So, uh, but it does open the possibility. So maybe she will become his woman. So they sort of teased and hinted at the fact that he needs a woman, and then by the end of this episode, Morocco is single. Coincidentally, conveniently, uh, so it would be interesting to see uh, how that goes. I have no doubts in my mind now that I'm thinking about it. Now that uh, her husband is gone. I would be very surprised if now they don't end up becoming a thing. If they don't end up becoming a couple, I'd be very surprised if Morocco is not his girl and whatnot. And I'm also very curious to see uh, what is he going to do, uh, you know, to benefit uh, uh, Taranga. Oh, there's still lots of questions yet that need to be answered, uh, but I'm still loving the series, and I do think that each episode gets a little bit better. So with that being said, folks, that's my review of episode 3 of Shogun. Let me know in the comments section below if you've seen it, and if you'd like to tell me why or why not. If you like this video, click that subscribe button. And until the next one, take care.